Hi and welcome to the iOS screencast. I'm your host Muhammad Azam and in this screencast we'll be talking about uh, auto layouts. Auto layouts were introduced in iOS 6 framework and which allows you to place your items on the screen, place your elements on the screen uh, using relative layout. So you can actually say that this layout or this particular view is equal in height to this particular view and this particular square view is equal height with this particular square view. So you can do all kind of these things and auto layout is of course essential if you are placing elements on the screen which you are in most of the applications and if you are of course designing it using the storyboard you can use the auto layout facilities that Apple has provided in Xcode using storyboard but you can also do auto layouts dynamically or programmatically in the code. But in this particular uh, introduction to auto layout screencast. I'm just going to show you how you can do it uh, using uh, the interface designer. So first here are the views. Uh, you have a one large rectangle on the top and we have also a one large rectangle at the bottom and in the middle we have two squares. Now if I run this and currently you can see in the document outline or document outline window we don't really have any constraints on it. Okay so let's go ahead and run this and you will see that how it looks like. So this is kind of like out of place, okay? Um, you can, however, click the, the whole view controller and you can say reset to suggested constraints, okay? Or add missing constraints. Now sometime it works and sometime it doesn't, uh, but it's always a good idea to, uh, have an, uh, to know what constraints that you are putting. Now if I say reset to suggested constraints, uh, it's going to put all these constraints on on these things. All right now It might not know how you want the information to be present and here we go You can see that although you got a little bit further But now you have to deal with the constraint that you haven't put and you have to deal with these heights and all this stuff So it's better always to have an idea of what you are trying to do uh, or what you're planning to do so that uh, you can make steps to achieve that. So let's remove all the constraints. Here we go. And I'm going to start adding the constraints over here. So the first thing I'm going to say is that, well, this blue box, this blue rectangle, is pretty much the equal size of this green rectangle. All right. So I'm going to select this one and this one using the command key. And I can go to editor, pin, and I'm going to say height equally. Not only is their height equal, but their width will also be equal. So I can simply say uh, width equally. So now we have two constraints already attached to it. Uh, this doesn't really have any distance from the top over here. So we can actually go over here and say pin and lead uh, no top space to super view. So you can see this constraint. Now you will see the constraints over here that are in orange color, which means that the constraint that I have actually applied, it does not reflect the the height, the width, the x and y position because there are very few constraints. So if I click this red arrow over here, you can see that it will exactly tell you what constraints you are actually missing. Uh, so it's saying need constraint for x position, need constraint for x position, uh, expected this, actual this. So it's a lot of information. It's actually helping you out kind of that uh, you need these constraints. Now you can of course use this menu over here uh, but for time being, I'm just going to use the menu on the editor window. Uh, let's go ahead and apply the constraint leading space to super view, which is this guy. And let's constrain this guy so that we know that the distance between this and the, uh, the trailing distance. So here we go. And as soon as you apply that, you will see that the color of the constraint change from orange to blue. That means that, okay, it has attached these constraints successfully. And these constraints, constraints can at least find some information about the view that you're trying to do. Still, we don't really have any distance between these two things. So I can do control drag and I can apply a vertical spacing. So here we go. We have the vertical spacing. Of course, constraints are still broken because this guy doesn't really have anything. Uh, so I'm now going to select the green rectangle at the bottom. I'm going to say, OK, bottom space to super view. And this is applied over here. It doesn't really have any distance, so it doesn't know how to size it. I can go to editor, pin, leading space to super view, and here we go. So we got the distance over here. Um, 
you can also apply the trailing space, which is this one, okay? And it already has a distance from this to this. So let's go ahead and run this now. Let's see how it looks like. Oops, now you can see actually in the background that you have managed successfully to apply the constraint for the blue and the green, which is the top and the bottom, but the middle one, which are actually squares, uh, they don't really have any constraints attached to them, so they don't know what to do. So they just uh, go crazy, all right? So let's go ahead and attach some constraints to them. Both of them are going to have the same height and the same width. So let's go ahead and select these. So this is a width constraint and go ahead and apply height constraint also. So this is the height constraint. Um, we can also go ahead and apply the constraint which is leading space to super view, which is this. And we can have a space of a, a, a horizontal spacing constraint between these two, this control drag and horizontal spacing. So we got this one. And then we can select the next one over here and select the pin and trailing space to super view. And as soon as you apply that, you will see that, okay, it has some information now uh, that will help us find the position of the element. Now you can go to uh, click on this red arrow and you will see all the constraints that are actually broken. Now it's saying that there are missing constraints and you need a missing constraint for Y, missing constraints for Y. So I'm just going to click on this and add the missing constraints. All right, now we need to see what are the missing constraints. So it has actually applied this guy. Now, necessarily, I don't think I need that, but let's go ahead and run to see if the Xcode has applied that. Is it correct or not? And you can see it's not really correct because we lost the height, okay? So we don't really need this kind of constraint over here. Just gonna delete that and, oops, and add this guy, which is a vertical spacing constraint, all right? Now let's go ahead and run this. And there we go, we got it actually working, right? So we have the blue rectangle on the top. We have these, uh, what are these? The, uh, the squares in the middle and the green rectangle at the bottom. And everyone is nicely sized, it looks pretty nice. And uh, that's pretty much it. All you have to do is to apply these constraints correctly and they will look great. Now, let's go ahead uh, oh, well, let me run it again. What happens if you move them? Now, this doesn't really work, right? It only works in only one orientation. So there's something that you need to do to get this uh, work correctly once you uh, rotate because everything is going off the screen. And that is exactly what we are going to cover in the next screencast. Uh, that's pretty much it. Hope you like this tutorial and stay tuned on iOS Screencard for more tutorials. Thank you very much.